All right, this is section we're going to talk about protocols, media, and devices. And this is um, unit five, uh, communications. First term, protocols. Protocols are the rules that we use to transmit information. So you might think of a protocol like when you're going to mail a letter, you put certain information at a certain location on the letter and the zip code and everything and then you're able to mail the letter and other people can interpret the letter because everybody's following the same rules same thing's true in communications when you have a device and that device let's say it's communicating wirelessly there's some rules between that device and the intermediate device in order for those to communicate and we have a variety of protocols that allow us to um, communicate. It's more than just one. There's multiple protocols. So it's the rules that allow us to communicate. Bandwidth, repeat of that, you know, I like to use the analogy, it's a pipe of how many bits per second we can move. So it's measuring based on time. Okay, so we've got all these bits, that's how many we can move through there per second. Um, it's very important because bandwidth is often used to measure how much you're going to pay for a connection. It becomes even more important when we talk about businesses and how much they pay for bandwidth and so forth. Now, you don't want to confuse that with, because <clears throat> we also talk about how many bytes you know, which is made up of eight bits, how many bytes we're able to send, okay, how many bytes we're able to move. There we're talking about quantity, okay. So if you might have a three gig data plan, which is then they're measuring how many gigs of data that you're actually moving through their equipment, okay, through their wireless and all their equipment, okay. So that's different than bandwidth. Okay, bandwidth is how many bits per second. This is a repeat transmission media, but it's very important that we talk about it again. Um, we have wired, where we actually have a connection. Let's say you have a, a laptop at home, and you literally have a cable that plugs it into, later on we'll talk about some other device, an intermediate device. So we can communicate through wire. Wire, wire is um, an excellent way to move data, especially within a facility, a local area network, which we talk more about later on. <clears throat> it's fairly secure compared to wireless, and it... Um, they have good speeds now with wire. Um, you don't have to worry about, at least not too much, about interference. You can make sure everything's connected within a facility. And um, it's been around a long time. We talk about twisted pair of wires. Okay. And the performance of that has improved a lot over time. Wireless, we send the signal through the air. You might see uh, people show that. So we usually have like an access point or some device that collects that wireless, and then we have our device that then communicates with that. Um, issues with being in the air, okay, in terms of security and other factors that might affect the signals when, the, when you're in the air, you might not have a single signal. You know, it might be interrupted by something, and there's lots of different things that can do that. There's actually a device in, um, you can buy it in China, I don't think you can buy it, or Japan, that if you're like on a subway train and you're trying to do some work and everybody's on their phones, it will actually jam the wireless signal so nobody can use their phones within like 30, 40 feet of you. They're illegal in the United States, but... Um, there are stuff like that. You know, when the signal's in the air, it's just not secure. The improvement over wireless has been tremendous. We um very excellent um, speeds now that has really improved in the area of wireless. 
And so that's another thing to consider. If your device doesn't have the most recent, you're not going to get the performance of that. Fiber optic is a great way to communicate. You know, we send it through glass tubes. Um, we send light. We can get um, we can get large bandwidth out of fiber optic, and it um, <clears throat> it's a great way to communicate. Uh, fairly secure. And around the 19 late 1990s and 2000s, there was lots of fiber laid throughout the whole world. And a lot of companies are laying fiber now, you know, even in our own area, um, Omnitel and uh, CLTel and some of those local um, companies, phone companies, are laying fiber even out to some locations out in the country, to farms and so forth. This would be a huge improvement over the wired solution, the wired solution of coaxial cable in which we use now, it's, it's good in terms of connecting for um, access to the internet, but uh, in the future, the fiber will be excellent. Okay, I'm going to scroll this up a little bit to finish out this last section. Alright, intermediate network devices. Okay, this isn't all of them. But this is the ones we're going to talk about. Modems. The term modem comes from modulator, demodulator, in which we used to take a module signals and change them into digital signals, which allowed us to use phone lines. Allowed us to phone lines. Now, we still use the term where there will be a device in your house, like a cable modem. That's an easy one to say. And that's hooked to the cable. And then let's just say the green wire then is hooked to your little routing device or whatever you might have connected on this end. And this, this device is able to take this signal here and convert it so it fits onto their wire. Okay? Sometimes that's referred to as a DMARC, but um, it takes the signal and allows it to go onto the cable. The same thing would be true if this wasn't um, cable. Let's say this was your phone line and this is a DSL modem. Those would be the two most common, DSL or a cable modem. So it takes a signal from inside and makes it so it can go on to the service provider, whoever you have. Switches, another intermediate device. Switches allow us to connect our device, let's say here a PC, and it keeps track of, later on we'll talk about the physical address, the MAC address, so that you can have lots of devices connected to the switch. And it keeps track of them because they all have a unique physical address or a MAC address. We'll talk more about that later. An access point is like a switch, okay? It's like a switch, except it sends a signal through the air and the same thing you can keep track of these mobile devices so that when the information comes back to the access point we're going to draw a little picture here in a minute it can get it to the right device routers routers work with logical and physical addressing logical and physical they work with IP addresses and they're able that should have been an IP and they're able to move traffic they're able to move traffic by creating the best path through a network best path through a network the um, <clears throat> I'll draw a little diagram here in, in a minute okay end devices <clears throat> We have PCs connected into a network. A lot of times PCs will be connected in to a switch. Um, laptops, a lot of times they're connected in through a, what do you think? A lot of them are connected through an access point. That would be through the air. Or they can be connected to a switch with a cable too. All your mobile devices, they're almost always connecting in through an access point. And tablets, 
through an access point. Watches, not watches, that might be kind of funny, because they might, uh, a watch might um, actually connect to your phone, and then the phone connect to the access point. Other devices, printers are connected to the network, servers are connected to the network, and there's other types of devices, and these are the um, end user devices that are connected to the network. So, if we were to take a picture of, of the whole thing, let me draw it here. You could have, we usually have devices. Okay, let's just make three of them. So here's a PC, here's a laptop, and here's a smartphone. Okay? So they typically connect in. If I was going to draw the other equipment, so we could have a switch, or we could have an access point. And so we get some type of connection in. Okay, it could be here, it could be a wire here, it could be a wire. Um, typically, these devices would be connected, <clears throat> and then maybe it's connected eventually to some type of routing device that's going to connect different networks. And then, depending on your local area network, that could connect into maybe the internet. in which lots of other networks connect into. So, at this point, we got end devices, and then we have all the intermediate devices that move the stuff to, for example, over here could be a uh, server, which would be another end device. And that's it for now.